Why not? Let's talk about the top five horror movies of the 1980s that you gotta watch before you die. get it popping. First, Nightmare on Elm Street. What do you want in a horror movie? Do you want a movie that has a slasher that's just murking people for no rhyme and no reason? Of course not. You want a backstory, you want motive, and you want a plot. Nightmare on Elm Street gave you all that and more. Listen, Freddy Krueger, the dude is iconic and legendary. Who else would kill somebody while cracking jokes at the same time? And you want to talk about stars? Yo, not only did this have like ill effects that you didn't see before this time, but it also gave you a young Johnny Depp, pre-21 Jump Street, pre-Pirates of the Caribbean, and all those other movies he did in between, and before he did this movie. The best kind of prize is a surprise. <laughs> Damn, I hated Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. But yo, listen, this movie went on to spawn a gang of sequels because the franchise was super duper lit. It started to stall out towards the end, but if you've never seen the original, Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely a go. Number two, Return of the Living Dead. Now, there are a thousand zombie franchises out there. You got The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, uh, Z Nation, the list goes on and on. Uh, George A. Romero had a series called Ret uh, Night of the Living Dead, but Return of the Living Dead had nothing to do with George A. Romero. This was a, a punk rock zombie movie that was far ahead of its time. And once again, you wanna talk about star power? Who's that black dude with the Jerry curl? Yup, that's Miguel Nunez, oh, AKA yeah. Joanna Man. Yo, this movie had an ill ass soundtrack, a comedic undertone, and this movie used to like, not to say scare me, but like, I remember where I was when I saw the trailer and the first time I saw the movie like with my mom. That was like me and my mom. Then we used to always watch horror movies together. And Return of the Living Dead was one of those joints that just jumped out at me. I don't want to spoil the movie. There was a sequel. It's semi-watchable, but the original can't be beat. You got to check that out. Friday the 13th. Now listen, the hockey mask is iconic. The only person who has a more iconic hockey mask is either Casey Jones from the Ninja Mutant Turtles or uh, the Mighty Ducks, all right? Jason Voorhees was that dude. And here's the crazy thing. He wasn't even that dude in this movie. I don't want to spoil it, but those who know, know, all right? The original Friday the 13th, it gave you so much mystery, so much wonder. You didn't know what the hell was about to happen, who was gonna get killed next, and you went along for the whole ride only to have your wig split at the very end when you found out who was doing the killing. And if you stick around to the very end, you get an extra special surprise. If you know, you know. Friday the 13th, similar to Nightmare on Elm Street, went on to spawn a gang of sequels and gave you some of the most legendary kills of all time. Remember that time Jason Voorhees put somebody in a sleeping bag, slammed that against the tree? That shit was wild. I used to do that to my cousins. Now this is a very obscure movie. It's called Dead and Buried. It is one of the first movies that I remember seeing as a kid, especially one of the first horror movies. This movie is just fucked up on so many levels. When is the last time you saw a horror movies where like kids was getting murked too? Yeah, like Dead and Buried went there in the 80s. It's about this town where the mortician had the ability to bring the dead back to life. And his whole little twisted thing was like, I want to make you look better than you did when you was alive. Yo, the movie starts off with this dude is on a beach taking pictures of this girl. The next thing you know, all of a sudden, all these weird people from the town just start like tying them up in like rope and stuff like that. They burn them alive and they're taking pictures. It's like that movie still bothers me to this day. It came on one night on one of those like, you know, like, uh, you know, regular TV channels. It was still good edited, all right? If you ain't never seen Dead and Buried, I suggest you order it on DVD. It's a horror movie classic that definitely doesn't get the love it deserves. And it's just, ew, it's creepy. It still bothers me to this day. Number five, let's talk about Fright Night. Okay, yes, I know, there was a remake that came out years ago with Shia LaBeouf. No, I'm talking about the OG Fright Night that came out in the 80s. You're so cool, Brewster. That was my sh yo. So, imagine if you, like, you know, you're minding your business, you, ha you have your house, and these creepy dudes live next door. Like, these two dudes move in together. And that's not even the weird part, because, like, in the 80s, that was weird. Like, oh, word, these two dudes moved in next door. Look at them. But no, it was even worse than that. Like these dudes were vampires and like people in the town was going missing. And it was one of those things where 
for it to be a movie that had teenagers in it, it was dark as hell. And if you've seen the movie before, what happens to the homeboy? Come on now. They made a sequel. The sequel was I, but the original version of Fright Night, with I think C. Thomas Howell was in that joint, is undefeated in my book. It's definitely worth a look, all right? So as the Halloween season descends upon us, be sure you check out these five horror classics before you die. This is the 80s edition. We're going to take it to the 90s soon. Peace and love. Live or die. Make your choice. Charlie, are you listening to me? The badly mutilated corpse was found under the North Creek Bridge by the old mill. As yet, Charlie, police have no leads, but you would have heard on the police band last night? That wasn't the only murder. The second in two days. And get this. Both of them had their heads chopped off. <laughs> Can you believe it? You're sick. <laughs> hey. Charlie?